Full disclosure, not to uh, prioritize any businesses. This was the first um, person who asked, hey, can I present at the PECA meeting? As you know, we had presenters from the CSA about two years ago, Community Support Agriculture. So if you have any ideas of any people who would like to present, by all means, just let me know. Um, all right, get to our elected officials. Um, Rovina from Council Majority's office. Childhood uh, Center in 219th Street. Okay. Uh, what time? It's going to be at 6:30. Tonight, early. Okay. Child. If anybody has any questions, feel free I can't to go tomorrow. reach out to me, reach out to Norma or Ralph. Thank you. All right. Um, sorry for the low attendance. I last two months I just didn't make flyers because I don't. Know, it's been hectic and whatever. So anyone ever wants to make flyers somewhere, but um, I'll, me and Donald will start doing it again starting next month. Um, and I've been having issues with my phone. So the only phone number reached me is the seven zero four four. I had an additional phone number for two months. Um, that was to help out my friend. It's complicated, but I don't have that other one anymore. So the original seven zero four four. To reach me. Um, all right, uh, Norma. Oh, hi. Uh, <laughs> Norma Lopez, BPEC board member. She's going to introduce our next couple of speakers. How are you doing, everybody? Good. How are you? Good. Should I say that again? How's yeah. everybody doing? Good. Come on. We came out here. We should be excited. The information is always good. Okay? <laughs> so um, the next speaker is going to be a good friend of ours. You know that she comes every year and she does um, a Kruger and May. She gives out all the beautiful Mary Kay gifts. And um, so we, we all should know her. And today she's here to talk about something different though. She's also working at Hustle Community College. And right now what she's going to do is talk to us about um, an education program that, um, that they got at Hustle College. It is a great opportunity. It's a training. And not only is the training, but it also is a job placement after you complete the training. So I'm going to tell you the details about the training. It might be one of the last, you know, programs that's going to be available uh, because there's so many threats about, you know, programs going to be cut here and cut there. So if you want to take advantage of this training, is it the health? Is it about health? Like, um, let her tell you about it, okay? And the next person hasn't arrived yet, but let's take care of Denise first. Give her a nice round of applause. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, my name is Denise Pagan. 
Um, I'm right now working with Hospice Community College as their outreach coordinator for the Allied Health Korea Pipeline Program. Our program is fun, it's federally funded by the Obamacare Act and is part of a national impact study. Our program has designed uh, courses in the healthcare field and those positions that are evolving right now that those who take the training now and start working five years from now, even though you don't have a bachelor's degree, you will be making great income because those are the positions right now that are needed because the healthcare industry is evolving and the positions that we are offering the trainings are in high demand right now. And we have a job agency looking for people with the skills and their state certification. The Allied Health Career Pipeline Program is a health profession opportunity grant. We have a $10 million grant, and the people who qualify for this free training, the free training we have um, CNA, which is the uh, CNA Clinical Nursing Assistant. Those are That's a great training for those that would like to like to get a taste of what it will be to be a nurse, at least you will start at the entry level. Also, if you know of anyone who would like to go to college and is likes the nursing field, but some people come and tell me, Denise, I like the nursing field, but if I go to college and invest four years and I get a loan, what if I don't like it? So they go this avenue because those students that are going to college, they want to make money, they want to enter the health field, the best way to do is see which certification will be more suitable for you. Get the four-month training, Get because our training, the, if you, the person qualifies, it is completely free. If you go through hostels, you have to pay, depending on which course you take, $2,000, $3,000. Plus, through hostels, and if it's not the Allied Health Career Pipeline program, you will have to pay for uniform and everything else. Our program, those who qualify will get the training pay. They will also get a job placement, and we also pay for the state exam. Everything is served in zero plate to help you develop a career in the healthcare field. So we have the HIT training, which is Health Information Technician for the data entry and the electronic filing that we do now with patient files because it's no longer the old-fashioned way that we all know. Mm -hmm. And that's how you put all the data entry and anything and all the records will be done electronically. With a four-month training that you take and you get successfully and you successfully finish your training, you will go into the job placement. We also pay the transportation. You get the metro car to go and metro car to go back home. Our this this is to help people to put the foot on the door and develop a career in the healthcare field. The, the qualified individuals are those with low, those with low financial resources. People who are could be maybe uh, receiving public assistance. Talent recipient, anybody that um, either not working, working part time. On Saturday, we are holding the the first open house for the year. It's going the the flyer that all of you have sh shows all the training that we are offering right there. I don't think we have the dental assistant, but the dental assistant just opened up when you come in on Saturday, those interested in learning about the opportunity and register, that's the best way they to do it because they will sit down with you and tell you whether you qualify or not. You will be getting an appointment to come in for registration and go through the process. Those who are selected to be part of this program will be participating in the National Impact Study. The study is conducted because they want to see if we give the low income community a free certification training like this one that we are offering, which will open the doors for a better future 
If this has impacted your, your life in a way where you don't need to be in welfare, where you don't need to be struggling because you can't find a good career because you don't have a college degree. Also, if anybody has a college degree but you're not working right now or you're just working a part-time and you meet the income criteria, you could also come because there are people looking to switch careers. This is for everyone. So I, I will advise you to take this flyer, pay, um, put it on Facebook and Twitter, let the community know that this grant exists so they can take advantage of it now that we have it. Because you know things are changing. We don't know if we, we're going to have it next year or at the end of the year. So Saturday, please share this with family and friends. And also, this is also a lottery base. Two-thirds of all the participants that qualify for the program will be selected by a computer program randomly. So for every 300 people that come in that qualify, the computer selects 200. So it's more than 50% that is selected. It's two-thirds. Those, that quarter that was not selected will receive a list of resources with similar training like ours that you could go and benefit and also develop a career. So you actually do not leave empty-handed. But like I'm saying, a lot of people are selected. It's great for me to hear when they have their first job placement and I hear them screaming, I'm working with Montefiore, I'm working with, and that's not mentioning all the clinics. No. Okay? So please share the word. If you know any organization who could benefit from this, let me know so we can also share the word with them. Thank you. What's the age? Okay. The age group is 18 and over. And by the way, 18, okay. in order, all the other courses that you see there, you need to have a high school equivalency except for the home health aid. That's the, the lowest paying job. For that one, you don't need a high school diploma. Uh -huh. But you do get tested to measure your um, reading and math level because you want to be at high school level. But for a home health aid, mm. you do not need your high school diploma. For all the others, you do need it. We also have we also have the um, HSC right high school equivalency because it's not called uh, GED anymore. Right. We offer the high school equivalency and it's contextualized. It's in the field of healthcare. Mm -hmm. So we also have that that program specifically is about it's six months. Some people do not fit in six months because they they haven't passed the test, but others do very well within the six months. They get their diploma. Okay. Any other question? Thank you. Oh, wait, Mara. Wait, Mara has a question. Wow, that was a lot of information. Good information, right? Mara has a question. Mara has a question. Mara, you have a question? Yeah. Um, Stand up, please. If, uh, you know, I know some people that might be interested in this, but if, in other words, Saturday is the first open house. Can they, can they come at another time, or is this the only okay. Saturday is the open house. That's the day where you will find out right here without an appointment, whether you're qualified or not. But on the flyer is the phone number. You cannot make it for any reason on Saturday. Mm -hmm. You can call that number and make an appointment, and they will then you will come in and they will tell you the documents you need to bring. The day of the open house, you do not need to bring any document that will be verbally telling you yes, you qualify based on the information you share with them. Is there a deadline to apply? No. Okay. The only thing I want to share is that the reason that we have in the open house now is because the fall semester is starting now. We are seven courses are starting, and we are recruiting for the courses that are starting in February and March. So, if there's a if, let's say if you want to start now and finish by July, which is the group that coming in now, the time to, to apply is either at the open house or call that number and make an appointment so you could be in that group that will be starting if you are accepted and qualified. Huh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Point. Yeah. All right, so uh, we want to welcome also, we have Jean DeFrancis here. Hello, Jean. Thank you for coming. And um, the next person that we want to ask to come up and speak um, is also a community business owner. He is one of the 
person that he's actually the only person that sponsored. If you recall the portrait that was done by Giovanni Monsanto, you remember the picture, the painting? Mm -hmm. He was a sponsor for that, and he also came and joined us at the block party, and he gave our book bags and everything for the children. And we, first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts here in our community. And it's my fault that he didn't come earlier because I never walked into his office and welcomed him, so I'm in trouble, right? <laughs> so, um, Gil, can you please come in and talk about your business in the community? And thank you for joining us today. Thank you, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm Gil Walton. I'm the State Farm Insurance Agent on Mace and White Plains Road. Uh, Norman did walk into my office last summer and introduced herself and said, uh, would you like to be involved in this block party? I said, okay, block party? That sounds like fun. Um, and then I realized how, I didn't realize how big it was and I didn't realize how much work he actually went into. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get her attention throughout the block party and I just could not let her down. She was that busy. So, um, but uh, to her point, uh, it's always good to be involved in the community. I, I'm from this community. I was born and raised a couple of blocks away from here. And when I had an option of opening an agency, I said, this is where I would have been. And so I'm not going to bore you with a whole lot of stuff about insurance, but uh, stop in and see me uh, if you're so inclined, and, uh, and I'll be here for a long time. So, thank you. 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 And um, so the next person that I want to um, bring up here and um, and, and it's great because when we have these meetings um, it's all about getting information that's you know, beneficial to all of us in one way or the other. But most importantly is the continued efforts in building bridges with our neighbors and our community businesses. And all the leaders that work hard every day to make this the best neighborhood possible. And another leader here today that I want him to come up and say a few words and then him and Gil will talk a little bit later, is the president of Atherton International Merchants Association, Gene DeFrancis. We need to know who you are. You have no guest here today. You look sharp. <laughs> I know, I didn't recognize him. Thank you, Raphael. Um, keep up the great work. Allerton has been busy. Great. So first thing uh, to start off with is we have an office now, and we're operating out of 930 Allerton Avenue. Uh, we share the space with a, a tax office, and if you don't know, it's uh, right between Colden Avenue slash Williamsbridge and Radcliffe Avenue. You know how Williamsbridge and Colden meet. Uh, right next door to Napoleon, so you should all be familiar with that. Um, next week, we're going to start voter registrations because uh, we have some special elections going on. So you can come into our office, uh, bring a friend that isn't registered to vote, come in, register. We're also doing a uh, coat drive, clothing drive, uh, suit drive because the, uh, the district attorney, I don't know if you mentioned it yet, is, uh, has 100 for 100 men, 100 suits for 100 men uh, coming out of the, the prison system. And they want to give them a coat. Uh, donated by the community, so uh, we're going to get involved in that as well as get our own uh, young kids' uh, suits so they can also go out in the in the community. So if you have an old suit that doesn't look old, uh, bring it in, and uh, we'll we'll channel it through the uh, the proper the proper chains. Um, and any other ideas that you have, come down and bring it. Um, I want you to be aware that Allison this uh, this year did not have a very good start. Just to be realistic. Um, we had two fatalities on Boston Road um, due, to, due to cars. Um, I personally have been on a mission to uh, fix this light on Boston Road in Allerton um, because what it does, 
it creates a launching pad in my opinion. So cars wait for the car in front of them to make a left turn, they get agitated, and if you add any other inhibitor to this factor, aka alcohol, um, you're, you're not thinking straight. So to quote unquote make up time, many of the cars, sober or, or, or um, not, uh, jet as soon as they get out of this, uh, this traffic spot. So um, I petitioned to get a left turn only light so cars can turn left. They don't have to wait for the oncoming traffic to come in. Cars can turn left and go straight and we open up the flow of traffic and everybody can relax. The other thing we're tackling heavy and we're not going to tolerate it for 2017 is blocking the sidewalk. I, I've, I've get so many phone calls and I, I try to be um, cooperative with the merchants because I know how much they're struggling. But at the same time, I know how frustrating it is when you're coming off the train and you're walking through a narrow path of oncoming traffic and then out of nowhere they stick a flyer guy right in the middle of that. We're, uh, we're working very heavily <laughs> with the, uh, the 49 precinct. He's actually the best flyer guy on Allison Avenue, so we, we like Mark. Mark is very respectful and funny. Um, but when, you, when you, you get in the middle of that funnel, and they do it on purpose, and I know they do it on purpose because I had several conversations with them, mm -hmm. and I talked to them over and over again, and uh, it's yes, yes, I understand. Um, their merchandise is further than three feet out. Anyway, we're, we're going to tackle this. Uh, very hard. Uh -huh. I also want you to know that we're going to get security cameras for stores uh, and their storefronts. Uh, three stores were hit. This, uh, three stores were um, broken into in the middle of the night that didn't have security cameras, and they were robbed this month. Um, the 49 precinct caught the man today, so um, so thank you for you them. And we're still working and going to catch the guy that has been, um, that attacks the, uh, the liquor stores and other, he's attacked the bread stores and there. We're, uh, we're not going to let up. You know, we can't prevent crime all the time and it just takes one person and in this case it was just two people out of 100,000 in our community. Mm -hmm. But um, we're, we're not going to rest until, you know, they see justice and our guys are good about prosecuting all the way so um, you don't have to worry about it at that as well and just uh, keep on top of that case and, and know what's going on. And then if there's any questions or any other concerns, allisonmerchants at gmail.com, you can reach out to us, you can come in, but Bronx Park East does a, does a great job of uh, getting the communication out there as well, so um, we got a lot of good people in this community, get some more people involved, bring a friend to the meetings, and uh, let's keep growing this. Can I sign that petition for the traffic? Oh. Sure. Do you? No. <laughs> okay. Well, the next, when is the next A meeting? The next A meeting is uh, February 7th at the Sands, 8.15, 7.30. Will you have the petition then? Um, I don't think we're going to have much of, uh, much of a resistance, mm -hmm. but if other members want to uh, get a petition together and bring it to let us know that you're, you're supporting us, but... We've talked to the councilman's office there behind us. We talked to the community board, um, and we've talked to the uh, the precinct and DOT. Um, and it's just about bureaucracy. But after the two fatalities, I don't see this uh, getting held on because we're not going to wait for a third one, even if it happens in November, December. Uh, it's just we we all all from this community. We know the dangers of Boston Road and Allerton. And something just needs to be done about it now, and we need to stop waiting. It, you know, it was a miracle we didn't have more fatalities um, all these years, mm -hmm. um, and then for it to start like that, uh, 2017 was just uh, so, to where, be blunt, it was predictable. You where know? were the fatalities? Because I was I was out of town. Uh, so the block over here, um, coming southbound, the car was uh, driving southbound on Boston Road. And, uh -huh. Try to weave in and out of traffic to make quote unquote make up for that time. He was intoxicated. He ran into oncoming traffic who smashed into uh, a parked car and lost his best friend and now he's in jail. So oh, wow. that's the other thing. Don't don't drink and drive and tell your tell your friends about the dangers of that. It's speak, not worth it. Did you speak to transportation alternatives? I will. I will. Thank you. No, we don't want to. Thank you. Nice round of applause, Steve. I didn't know all of that was going on.